everybody. It's that time again. It's time for Diary of Physicist Farm Gal. My name is Deborah, and I'm coming to you from here on my family farm in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks, where I like to do all the crafts. I knit, I crochet, I sew, I quilt, I make baskets, I make jewelry, I do needlework. I'll try any craft once and twice if I like it. Uh, I am also a university professor where I teach courses to physics majors, general education courses, and courses, uh, upper division courses on astrophysics and meteorology. And I'm a docent at our planetarium when we're able to have planetarium shows. Of course, in this last year, we haven't done a whole lot of that. And last but not least, I am a farmer. I raise grass-fed beef and horses here on this 170-acre farm. And um, I have a retirement herd of miniature horses, miniature donkeys, donkeys, a miniature mule named Pumpkin who thinks she rules roost, and Princess Penny, the potbelly pig, protectress of my heritage poultry. And as you can tell from my little co-host here, Willie, I am fur kid mom to 14 dogs, seven indoor cats, and an undetermined number of outside barn cats. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I hope you'll come along and join us on Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. If you're looking for us on social media, you can find me on um, Instagram and on Ravelry as Doc Firewoman. We also have a Facebook group for the podcast, Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. There is a Ravelry group as well, although I tend to be, I have been more active on uh, Instagram and on the Facebook group lately, simply because I know it's accessible to more people. Um, you know, I keep hoping that things there will change, but... Um, We'll see. Until my friends who were having issues with Ravelry tell me that they're not having the issues anymore, I'm going to kind of tend to um, use the other forms of social media as my um, outlet for things. Um, I'm also on Twitter as Doc Firewoman, but unless you are like me and you're a, a socially liberal Democrat, uh, probably wouldn't follow me on there because I'm pretty outspoken on there. I am a little out, well, I won't say I'm a little, I'm a lot outspoken on here. And right now, y'all, this world is getting me down. I'm not going to lie. There is, I just don't understand when caring about people became, and having empathy for people different than myself became such a radical concept. Can somebody tell me when that happened? I don't remember. I didn't get that memo. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's all I'm going to say about that. We do have some make-alongs going on. Uh, we have the art. We are stitching the Long Dog Samplers Pandemic Sampler together. That is the DPF Pansal. Uh, I'll try to remember to put the hashtags down below. We have the Farm Gal Mal, which is just working on whatever craft you want to work on. Uh, it can be any craft. It can be uh, pottery. It can be baking. It can be knitting. It can be sewing. It can be anything. Uh, and also, we have the No Shame Mal. Start what you want to start, right? Uh, this month is our May Mini Mal, and our May Mini Mal is focusing on mitts and magic, but also any pattern that supports transgendered person's rights, or is any any maker who supports transgendered person's rights, or a pattern, or a project bag, or anything that you post a picture of, and you put May Mini Mal in the hashtag. Um, I'll be searching on that hashtag to give away a prize at the end of May. Uh, I am currently working on the uh, Cowl by Quaylon Stark from uh, Quo Designs, the F Turfs Cowl. Um, and that's because I want to, I believe you should be inclusive, right? Um, I don't get to define what being, however you decide to identify yourself. That's not up to me to decide. That's your decision. And I don't want you deciding for me that because I haven't had biological children that I'm not a female right? So I don't, I don't, I think we need to just let people be who they feel that they are. Not hurting anybody as far as I can tell. <laughs> um, you know, so anyway, um, so we have those all going on. We do have sewing circle weekends and we have stitching weekends that you can follow me on Instagram or on the Facebook group. 
Uh, we do have Zoom meetups um, weekly at least, usually more than once a week we get together on Zoom. Um, if you want to be part of that, just follow my Instagram or follow my uh, follow the group on Facebook. Join the group on Facebook. We'd love to have you there. Um, yeah, that's it. Social media. <laughs> I was telling one of my friends last night that I'm basically feral after this last year. I don't know how to play nice around people. And I think I don't want to anymore because what did playing nice get you? No, I, I want to be, I want to be kind, but also have boundaries as Michelle Bendy will say. I also think that, you know, what you do is not my business. If you're not hurting people, you know, I don't know. It just, I'm, my mind is on that tonight, today, I guess. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, we're going to move on and we're going to have some finished objects. What you doing, Willie? Apparently he's found something interesting. So we're going to move on and talk about finished objects. Okay, well, um, I'll show you really quick what's on my dress form, Betty Boop here. Um, this is the Hemlock. <laughs> oh, what that was. This is the Hemlock Tee by Grainline Studios. This is a free pattern if you sign up for their newsletter. And then this is the Mama Darcy Vest by Made for Mermaids. It has a couple of different ways that you can make it. This is just the sleeveless long, the sleeveless long vest. There's also a cardigan style. And there's also a high-low uh, cardigan style as well. It's meant to be made out of knit fabric. And then this is cotton of uh, wall from Mood. Um, but I did a test muslin to make sure that it would work. And it seemed to fit fine. I did cut it a little bigger across my shoulders. Uh, mostly because I'm broader across my shoulders. Uh, but also to make sure it had enough give in it. I thought it would be a nice versatile piece to wear with a tank top or wear with a t-shirt or uh, whatever. So it does come down below my knee. You can't really tell that. But then this is just a nice um, drop sleeved um, t-shirt, long three quarter length sleeve t-shirt. That's a free pattern. The Made for Mermaids pattern is a pay for pattern off of Etsy, but the uh, Brainline Studios is, is free. Um, also, um, other finished objects. Now, Willie, you can't be in my lap right now, buddy. You want to hop down? Another sewing item that I finished, and I'll try to remember to put a picture in right here, is I made the Hinterland dress. The Hinterland dress is a pattern by Sew Liberated. Uh, this is also in cotton wool, and I'm going to have to wear stuff underneath it, like a tank top and probably some leggings underneath it. Uh, I made the sleeveless version because I thought that would be the most versatile because then I could wear a lot a sleeve a shirt under it or I could wear a car a sweater over it um, in the winter time and kind of make this go um, all season all year long. Uh, these are vintage buttons that for my button collection that I've had for probably 30 years. So this is also cotton voile and I wanted to make the hinterland because I wanted to take advantage of this very large scale sunflower print. In the skirt so very straightforward pattern very size inclusive uh, i highly recommend the hinterland dress because it has some different variations that you can do with it and make it a real versatile uh, wardrobe piece has some other sewing stuff it is just t-shirts and tank tops so we're gonna forego showing you those okay so um okay so a big finish this time is i finished the frosted frosted pumpkin stitchery chinese zodiac sale from last year so this is um, Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery did this last year. It was the year of the rat. So the rat is at the top, but I was able to complete this. I purchased the kit from them when it went on sale. Um, and now it's done. Uh, so now I have to figure out how I want to finish it. I have some ideas about how I want to finish it, but I'm very tickled. I love the little creatures. I think they're so cute and sweet and um, had plenty of floss in it left over uh, from the kit and plenty of the treasure braid to add to my stash. So I'm very pleased. This is stitched on 14 count um, Ada by Picture This Plus, I believe is who provides the Ada for their um, kits and then, then the called for kit colors. So Chinese Zodiac Sal, 
uh, by Frosted Pumpkin Sidgery. And I and I was motivated to finish this by the Stitch Asia hashtag uh, in March. And then I just kind of stuck with it and finished it. So yay me. Um, okay, so another thing that I finished in my April 9 Designs bag here. Um, again, I can't say enough about Charlotte's bags. I finished the um, Finding Balance. Finding Balance by C.J. Brady. I, st I uh, crocheted it in the uh, Yoshi and Lucy Tits Out Collective colorway called Tit Cat that I've had for a little bit. Again, I love C.J. Brady's shawls because they are great one skein wonders. Now, I have not blocked this. This is going to grow, I'm pretty sure, and get longer, okay? But I have not blocked this because the reason I'm wearing my Raisin Bran Sun shirt today is I haven't seen the sun in six days. It has rained here for six days. <laughs> We are underneath a really unstable weather pattern, and the storms are just training right over the top of us. It just rains and 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 rains. And so I decided to wear my Raisin Brand Sun Tea. But what this means is I haven't gotten around to blocking this yet. So my little progress keeper there is by Charmed and Dangerous and my little Winter Wolf. But I think it's a nice little scarf length. But once I block it, it'll be even longer. So, um, I love CJ Brady because her one skein wonder stuff. Now, she does have other stuff. Uh, she just came out with a pattern, I think, that's for DK that's bigger. But she has a lot of these little one skein wonders. So, if you've got a lot of uh, really pretty one skein um, yarns that you don't know what to do with that are fingering weight, um, I really highly suggest taking a look at her crochet patterns because they're very straightforward, for one thing. you can, They're really easy to social crochet, social, you know, sit on a Zoom group or whatever and crochet. Um, and it uses up most of the skein. So you see, this is what I had left. So, you know, I'll probably save this. I don't know for what, but I'll figure something out to do with it because I'm a hoarder like that. <laughs> but you can see as I stretch this, it's going to block out to be a little bit bigger and I believe a little bit longer than it currently is. So this is Finding Balance by CJ Brady. Okay, that is all of my finished objects this time. Um, I, I apologize for not podcasting sooner. It just seemed like May has gotten away from me with, we'll talk about it in academic and, and farm stuff. But um, I do have several works in progress that I will share with you now. Okay, so the lighting in here is terrible and I realize I kind of look puffy today. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but anyway, so, um, yeah, so here's some works in progress. So this is my April 9 Designs uh, Kitty Cats Beekeepers bag. Um, I love Charlotte's bags. I can't say enough about them. She always gives you a cute little progress keeper. And the beautiful thing about them is they have this ruler inside. If you don't carry a ruler with you, you always have one in your bag. I am working on Quailin Stark's pattern, as I've already mentioned, for the Minnie Mouse. And I won't show the name of it because I try to keep this family friendly, but it's F Turfs. And if you don't know what a turf is, T-E-R-F, it's a trans exclusion radical feminist. And it is people who don't believe that trans women are women. I disagree with that. So I want to support my uh, transgendered person friends. And so... You know, there are certain authors that say things that make you mad, <laughs> and other people too. But anyway, so uh, this pattern, let me try to find the picture here, is, um, you can see the picture right here. It's a crocheted cowl. It is color work in crochet. So um, this, I've only just began it yesterday, but it goes really quickly. I actually started it with foundation, a foundation row, instead of doing the chain, because I don't like to crochet into the chain, but um, it is for worsted weight yarn, I believe. Let me look. Yeah, worsted. Worsted weight yarn, so it should be pretty warm, um, and it's done in two colors, and this pattern, the way the pattern repeats, it makes the jog in the pattern. I am crocheting this out of two yarns that I purchased at the same festival where I first met Quail and Stark. Uh, these are by Dizzy Fibers. It was just a little local person who was trying to learn to dye. And this was their, some of their attempts at dyeing, and I thought these were really pretty together. 
So I decided that I would use this yarn in honor of Quaylen, um, since that's where I met him and took a crochet class and uh, use it for his pattern. So, uh, yeah, so that's my first work in progress. I just barely got started on that one. It's 36 rounds, and I think I'm on the fifth round or something like that. I literally just started it last night. Also, I just started in this uh, planetary bag, and I think my friend Nancy made me this one. I have two of these that look very similar, and I think this is the one Nancy made for me. I am restarting the... Um, Fernway Socks by Knitting Expat. This was from one of her sock clubs, uh, Wanderlust Sock Club in 2018. I am not a fast sock knitter. Y'all know I have feelings about knitting socks. Um, I am, I just barely started these because these are what I worked on at graduation. <laughs> I took these to graduation with me. Um, we did get to go to graduation. And I'll talk more about that um, in the in the, the, the science sprinkle segment, but I just barely have started. I knit my socks two at a time, toe up, magic loop. So this is as far as I got, but this is just some uh, gray that I had from some Craftsy uh, Cloudborn yarn. And then I am using um, Knit Picks, or is this Felici? Yeah, this is called Beyond the Wall. And my friend Mary gave me this. And it has a double meaning. I know it has a meaning to all you Game of Thrones fans. It also has meaning to me going back to what I was talking about, about being a decent human being. <laughs> okay, so Fernway is an ache to get away and travel to a distant place. So these are the ones I'm making uh, right now. So I haven't worked on those except for that night at graduation. But I'll probably pick those up uh, at some point and work on them a little bit. Um, okay. Now, uh, I'm going to skip over another knitting FO because it's kind of my big one that I've been focusing on and show you a couple of stitching FOs. We did have our pandemic sale, um, pandemic panic weekend where we had a bingo game and we'll do that again in a couple of months, but that did get us out working on pandemic. So I did make some progress on pandemic. Basically, I finished these shapes here. I stitched the koala bear, the squirrel, the bird, and then I started on this diagonal bit with, there's a cornucopia right here, and I'm working on that. I haven't touched it since that weekend, but I did stitch on it for seven days, though. That was one of the bingo squares, is I did, did stitch on it for seven days, so I have managed to do that. Um, so, yeah. So, what we did is we had a bingo game, and whoever got bingo first, besides me, got a gift certificate to my local needle workshop. And then the person that got bingo second also got a gift certificate. And then um, we're doing a blackout bingo. So um, whoever gets all their squares covered first uh, on the, their bingo card will get another gift certificate. So to the Stitcher's Garden. So this is as far as I am. My needle minder, my friend Tyra made me for that. Uh, this is stitched with a uh, DMC Colorist in Canadian Nights on uh, 28 count over two. It's two threads over two. This is 28 count Jobelin in a color called Wood Violet from 123 Stitch. So that's as far as I am right now. But, you know, progress, no matter how slow, is still progress, right? I haven't touched it since that weekend because I was trying to finish the Chinese Zodiac. When I finish the Chinese Zodiac, I'm trying to kind of work through some things that I have started. So the next thing that I wanted to finish was the pillowcases for Miss Betsy. If you remember, I found these pillowcases and I have the completed one right here. Um, I found this set of pillowcases in, and I haven't washed this yet, so it's still all lumpy bumpy because I need to wash it and press it. But um, that looks terrible when I show it like that. Looks better when I hold it like that. <laughs> I found these pillowcases in a, a bag of stuff from a thrift store. And Miss Betsy loves magnolias. So um, I'm doing these for her as a gift. So um, this one has got stains on it. I don't know how that happened. But I just I started this the other night and started on the leaves. So I'm trying to work on this a little bit every couple days. Um, trying to get um, this finished for her. And then I will wash these and um, I'm probably going to put something over the stitching on the back, like some uh, fusible interfacing and maybe put some fabric over it where it doesn't show. Or I may cut these panels off. If I can't get the stains out of this one when I wash it, I may cut the stitching panels off and sew them onto some other pillowcases. 
we'll see. I don't know yet. But these were a, a kit from Janlin, I believe. And the kit was at least complete in the, um, in the bag of stuff. Now, someone had started one of them and stitched it closed. They had stretched the whole thing instead of opening it up. <coughs> so I had to take the stitching out of it and restart it. But I am working on that for Miss Betsy, um, whose birthday was this week. So I wanted to try to get them done for her this month if I could. Okay, my last uh, work in progress is one I've been focusing on. This is in my Grenade Creations bag. Uh, Kirsty made these, I think, for Perth Festival of Yarn. Uh, I have been working on my flax sweater by Tin Can Knits, and I finally feel like I've made enough progress that I can show you what I've done. So I am knitting this out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in a colorway called Mineral Heather. And I love how rich this colorway is. It's sort of a slate blue, <coughs> excuse me, with flecks of purple and pink and teal green in it. So I love how complex it looks. I have completed a sleeve. So uh, the last time I showed this to you, it was up here where the little Yeti was. Well, <coughs> excuse me, where the Yeti was. So I stitched this much on the body because I was on the phone with someone or I was on a, a teleconference and I needed something that I didn't have to pay attention to. And since the sleeve has that garter panel in it, I didn't want to forget that. So um, I have completed a sleeve. Now I completed this sleeve actually twice because the first time I completed it following their recipe for the decreases, uh, I had gotten a little um, overzealous when I picked up stitches, I guess, for the arm. And my arm was too floppy when it got down here. So after talking it over with my friend Tyra, she suggested a different recipe for my decreases. So I followed, what I did was I followed her recipe and that's what all these stitch markers are. Then I put it on and I was like, okay. So I went straight for a little while, knitted straight for a little while. Then I did a few more decreases. And then I put it on as I was going just to kind of judge it. And then right before I got to the wrist, I did a few more decreases. And it fits beautifully. It fits beautifully. So I'm actually pretty far down the body on this. I tried it last night. I tried it on last night. And it's actually, uh, I'm closer than I thought I was on the body. I want it to hit me about mid-hip, I think. Or, the, you know, maybe the top of my hips. Uh, I don't want it at my waist. I want it longer than that. So it's something I could wear with leggings or, or whatever and feel comfortable so um, I'm that far. So what my plan is, is I've got a ball of yarn attached to the body right now that I need to finish up. So I'm going to finish that. Then I'm going to do the next sleeve, the other sleeve, and then I'll finish the body. So I'm going to do this. Once I get that ball of yarn knitted up off the body so I'm not flopping it around while I'm trying to knit, um, I'll do the body. So yay, progress, progress. I really like how this sleeve fits. So I'm glad I took Tyra's advice and followed that recipe for um, the knit. I did have to, I was, I was all the way down to here the first time and I ripped it back to where I started the decreases. Cause I like the, I mean, even though I got overzealous in picking up stitches, I like the extra room cause I'm pretty broad shouldered, right? So I like that extra room there uh, cause it fits better, but um, I didn't like how open and floppy it was when I got down to the, my, the, my wrist, okay? So it basically decreases from here to here on my arm and then it goes straight for a little bit and then it decreases, well, no, that's a lie. It decreases from here to here, goes straight, decreases a little more, goes straight, decreases a little more and it hits me. I like my sleeves, my long sleeves to hit me about right there. So I like them to come down on my hands a little bit. That's just personal preference. So this sleeve is significantly longer than it says to do in the pattern, but I had planned for that. I had bought extra yarn. So I should be good. So yay, um, yay me. I'm almost, almost, almost done with the sweater. Um, hopefully by the next time I podcast, it'll be done. And boy, it's going to be warm. <laughs> it's going to be a warm sweater because I'm pretty cold natured and it even makes me warm to hold it and work on it. Okay, so uh, that's all my works in progress. So we're going to break here and talk about some future crafting. Okay, so I'm at my sewing table to talk about my future crafting because what I want to show you is, is sewing stuff mostly. Or is all sewing stuff because I didn't bring any of the other stuff back here. So um, I want to make myself some long kind of knit tank dresses that then again, I can wear sweaters over or whatever. So the pattern I have picked out is um, Bella Sunshine Designs. And this is a pattern for both a um, 
tank top, a loose fit tank top, and a dress. It's called the Bella Racerback, okay? The Bella Racerback, and it comes as a dress or as a tank. And let me see if I can find, they got pictures of it made up as a dress where you can kind of tell what's going on here. I guess not. I thought they would. I thought they did, but um, anyway, so I want to make myself a couple of, um, or two or three racerback tank tops. Um, we went to a bra fitting, <laughs> and I'll t uh, tell you a little bit about that while I'm bringing my fabric over. Um, most women don't know what size bra they wear. Um, I did have my band size correct, and I knew my cup size was off because I knew the difference between my full bust and my cup size, or my band size, I knew what that number was. And so I knew, um, I knew that my cup size was off. I didn't realize how much I was off. <laughs> so we went, uh, three or four of my friends from uh, the women's book group that I'm in at work, and I went to a place called Angie Davis in Conway, which takes appointments, it's by appointment only, and that way you don't have to feel intimidated. And, and she is very, very size inclusive, body positive, sex positive. It's a great store. Um, and we got fitted and then bought bras. Now they were pricey, but good bras are worth the money, right? Because they'll last a really long time if you take care of them. So uh, I bought a couple of racerback bras, or they're actually convertible to racerback. So um, I'll show you the fabrics that I want to make that racerback tank out of. This is the first fabric I want to use. This is from Spoonflower. This is a jersey, cotton jersey knit. Um, this will not be the first one I make, though. I want to try it out on a different pattern because, as you all know, Spoonflower fabric is expensive. Uh, but it's because, you know, it, more of it goes to the artist, I hope. Um, this is some... Um, jersey from Joanne Fabrics. Uh, this was actually bought with a gift card that my friend Penny gave me for being the first bingo on the pandemic <laughs> sale. So, uh, or the pandemic bingo weekend. So I'm going to make the address out of that. And then this is also from Joanne Fabrics. This is a double brushed spandex fabric that's got astrological symbols on it or astronomical symbols. They're kind of the same thing here. Um, so yeah, so those are the three fabrics that I want to make that dress out of. Then, um, my friend Ashley shared on our group this amazing fabric by, uh, Lady McElroy called Cobra Corsage. <laughs> I'll show you the fabric. It is very unusual and I love it because it's unexpected. So it's this beautiful botanical print and then you look closer and there's beetles and there's snakes and there's all this cool stuff on it. Okay, this is from England. So it was a little bit expensive. Uh, I had to track it down because it sold out really quickly um, when they did the second run of it. They sold out really fast, but I found it from Stone Mountain and Daughters in California. And uh, that's a cotton um, voile or cotton lawn. They call it a cotton voile basically. And I want to make this pattern out of that. This is by Adelica Patterns, and this is their size inclusive range, this sundress here. Okay, so I wanna make that. Now again, I'm gonna do a test run on that out of some different fabric before I cut into that more expensive fabric. So that's my plan. Um, I also have some pajama pants already cut out. Um, I cut a pair of pajama pants out of this fabric, My Little Witches, which I bought at Marshall Dry Goods, if you remember the video when I went up there on my birthday. And then another fabric that I picked up at Marshall Dry Goods, just because I thought it was fun, is this farm fabric. And you have to buy it by the bolt. So I have a whole bolt of this. <laughs> so I don't know what else I'm going to make. I'm thinking about making myself like a jumper dress. I've got this really cute uh, pinafore jumper dress that I think I may make one, but I would line it. I love that fabric. <laughs> Suits my quirky nature right down to the ground. So um, anyway, so I cut some pajama pants out too, so I'll get those um, knitted up. So uh, yeah, now we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about Happy Mail Acquisitions. Okay, so I'll show you a few uh, gifts and acquisitions. These are more, stitch more stitching related type things. Um, first thing is my friend Ashley gave me this really cool bag 
uh, I think she got this at Michael's, but she uh, brought this to me one day when we had lunch uh, on campus. A group of us, after we got vaccinated, decided we would try to have lunch outside uh, since we just hadn't seen each other. So she was kind enough to bring me this bag, which I think is really great. It's a nice canvas, heavy canvas bag, so it'll be a great tote bag for a project. Then I received a wonderful surprise in the mail from Charlotte from April 9 Designs. Look at this bag, y'all. Look at these horses. I was so shocked when I got this in the mail. It was just the sweetest surprise to me. She's such a sweet person to think of me like that. And I just love this fabric. I love it because it's got Appaloosas and paint horses on it. And that's what I raise is Appaloosas and paint. So this is perfect. And then it's got a little uh, horsey uh, progress keeper. I don't know how well you can see him up there, but I love this bag. So um, then... Um, I'll show you a couple of patterns. I don't, I haven't shown the thing, what I, my market haul necessarily yet, because it was kind of, <laughs> it kind of came in in dribs and drabs. But these are both tiny modernist patterns from market. And, um, so I got these two. That one, the whole world is a gardener. It's called Secret Garden. And then I got, uh, Be Your Own Kind of Beautiful. And I think I want to make this along with the, the We Believe one and put these in my office to kind of make my students feel more comfortable around me. Um, in that vein, I recently purchased uh, a book, a couple of books. Uh, after we talked last time about women's bodies uh, being weaponized against them, I got um, The Body is Not an Apology and The Body is Not an Apology Workbook by Sonia Renee Taylor. And these are books about body positivity and self-love. And I'm, I'm a sucker for a good workbook. So um, I'm going to work through these, I think. Um, I'm working on another workbook right now called the Self-Compassion Workbook. And my runes class is doing a deep dive into each of the runes where we're spending three days on each one studying. So probably when I finish that, I will start these, this book. Um, then the last thing is I'll just show some fabrics that I've recently gotten from my two fabric clubs that I'm in. I'm in the Fortnite Fabrics Subtle Samplers um, Club, and these were two of the most recent ones that I got. This is um, their um, last month. This was um, Herbert, and this is on 36 count linen. They had a little bit of a, a snafu with their fabric provider because I normally get 32 count even weave um but they couldn't get it so i said 36 count is fine and then this is the month before this is their 32 count um even weave and this is called agnes or i'm sorry this is not even weave this is linen because i decided to be brave and try linen <laughs> then um oh the mail's here okay um these are the two latest uh fabric of the months from be stitch me uh, this these are both 28 count joblin and um, so I think these are really pretty. I don't think, I mean, these were last month, so I don't think I'm spoiling anything for anybody, but I think these are both really beautiful. So, all right. So that is all, <coughs> excuse me, that is all my acquisitions, <coughs> excuse me, that I'll share. <laughs> and we will move on now and talk about science. I guess I didn't get a package in the mail. She didn't come up to the house. So uh, anyway, we'll move on and talk about science. Okay, well, here's what's going on around campus. We had graduation. My, my student Grace graduated. Uh, she is headed off to the University of Maryland. Uh, has already got a position in a research lab out there. I'm very proud of her. Um, I, we were lucky enough to be able to go to graduation this year, but they did it using a lottery system for the faculty. Of course, they had plenty of seats, but they split the graduations up into multiple ceremonies. When we do that anyway, but they split them down even more. And then there were, uh, they were limited to the number of family members that could come. And then uh, the seats were all spaced out. But we were able to go if we wanted to. And so I said, okay, I'm going to go because I want to see her graduate. And um, she was very sweet. She gave me, um, let me get him actually really quick. Sorry, Willie. I know. You just got up here. Now you got to get down again. I mean, she gave me a really cute little present. <laughs> well, she wrote me a sweet card, but she gave me, this is the stuffy of the sun, or a, she said it looks like a red giant star. 
but um, she wrote me a really sweet card, and then she also made a very, very generous donation to Community Connections, which is the group that we've done Super Science Saturday for the last few years. Um, she is just an extraordinary woman, young woman, and I am so proud that I've gotten to know her. Um, she's going to go a long way. I can't wait. One of these days, I'm convinced that there's we're going to be landing a probe or landing something or doing something, and she's going to be the person on the NASA live stream talking, and I can't wait to see that day. Uh, so, she graduated... Um, we finished the semester. I'm working on an intercession class right now. That's a short, short-term class. Um, but I guess the, uh, another piece of news is I got accepted to our Teaching Excellence Institute. Um, I am going to be. I'm in the inaugural group that was selected to participate in this Teaching Excellence workshop for a week uh, in June. It's going to be in person, uh, which will be good. Um, and I mean, I've loved having some Zoom meetings and there have been opportunities for us to attend things that we would have never gotten to attend otherwise. In fact, next week I am attending a, an equity, a racial equity workshop that is being put on by AAPT, American Association of Physics Teachers, to try to draw. And it's not just about racial equity, but it's about a draw, a drawing more underrepresented groups across the board into physics. Uh, and last week, I did um, a racial equity workshop, or an equity, bringing equity workshop, not just about racial equity again, but about LGBT plus issues, about socioeconomic equity um, into our community. And I did that through our outreach. It was an all-day Zoom thing, and it was really good. It was very engaging. Normally, those things you would think could be really dry, but it was very engaging, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so I'm excited about the Teaching Institute. Um, other than that, you know, uh, I'm working on a couple of grant opportunities. I'm co-writing a grant with my former student and now, uh, colleague who is tenure track, Jeremy. We are trying to write funds to get the money to build a radio telescope. Uh, radio telescopes are something that are actually reasonably easy to build comparatively speaking and radio astronomy is a is something that you can do 24 7 really uh you can do 24 7 it doesn't matter if sun's out doesn't matter if it's raining whatever and um there are a lot of cool citizen science opportunities that we could do with our students the other grant that i'm working on i actually just sent a question about you have to submit an intent to submit by next Wednesday, and it's called NASA at the Library, and it's through our space grant group where um, they've broken up the country into these different regions, and it's about getting per each region, they're going to select one recipient, and um, they're going to do outreach via social media or via internet with these um through the public libraries in these in these uh, places that have minority or underserved populations um so i'm a, i'm going to apply for that although the application is really intimidating i'm not going to lie there's a lot of stuff in there that i'm like what is this so i've got to do some work with our sponsored programs office about i don't know exactly what this all means um so i'm going to submit my re intent to submit and then I've got like three weeks to write the actual grant. I've already actually started writing the grant because I was doing way more work than I needed to do for the intent to submit, apparently. <laughs> so um, anyway, so we're doing that. Um, right now, we plan to go back live in the fall. And I think that that's going to be good for some things. Um, but... I'm going to keep some things that we've done online and we'll, and I'll kind of see how that plays out over the fall. But, um, I think there's a, a happy medium there. So that's kind of what's going on in the science world. You know, graduation was a big deal watching our students graduate and, um, you know, watching, watching them go on to the next phase in their life is always, it's always hard because it's like you build this little family and then you have to say goodbye. And I mean, it's, and, and I'll, I'm sure I'll stay in touch with some of them. I know that I will, uh, cause I've stayed in touch with a lot of my former students. Um, but 
it, you know, it's bittersweet because you're so proud of them, but then they're leaving, you know, they're leaving and, and you're not going to see them in the halls or you're not going to have them in your classes. And that's a little bit sad, but you're also proud that they get to go on and do great things. <coughs> so anyway, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at on that. I'm not going to say a whole lot more today. I'm going to try to keep this on the shortish side if I can, but um, anyway, move on and talk about farm life. Okay, so it, <laughs> here on the farm, also known as Aquatica, <laughs> it has rained every day for the last six days. It is currently raining. The ground is saturated. It is incredibly muddy. Um, the flies are terrible. Um, you know, maybe this is what they were saying. You know, as climate change comes, we're going to come more tropical in our weather. And I can definitely feel that way because it is warm and it is icky outside. Um, but anyway, so it is raining. I did get my garden in. I did a much smaller garden this year because I still have so much canning from last year. Vanessa was kind enough to send me some canning stuff. So, yay. Thank you very much. I just got some of it um, this week in the mail. Um, so, I'm very excited about that. I did gather some things to dry. Um, we took, I took two beef. Two of the bulls went to the processor and I delivered the beef to my customer's. Um, you know, I was having a conversation with someone about, you know, if I'm going to be an omnivore, I need to be tied to that food. I need to understand the sacrifice. And, um, you know, it's not something I do lightly. Uh, eating meat is not something that I do lightly. Um, but, so I took two beef um, down, had some bulls getting out. Um, I think because I had to carry beef over, the be the bulls over, they had gotten really big and they were starting to pick on some of the younger ones. So the younger ones just said, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm leaving. So I had one, Oliver, who's Miss Shirley's favorite, uh, go down to Mr. Ray's house, which was fine, except periodically he would get out on the road and uh, I would get phone calls saying, you've got a cow out, you've got a cow out. And I'm like, okay. Um, you know, from 911 or whoever, instead of people stopping at the house and telling me they're out, they call 911. Whatever. A lot of people will just stop at the house and go, hey, is that your cow? And I'll be like, yeah, or I'll go see. Sometimes it's not mine. Um, and then I had two going to the east. So I found the hole to the east and fixed it, although that wire is getting pretty old and brittle. So I need to go over and check and see if they've broken it again. Um, and I think we fixed where Oliver got out before he could get home. <laughs> so he just stayed. So uh, a couple of nights ago, um, the, Doug got him up in a pen and he was none too happy. I'll put the little video of him in um, the pen. He wasn't happy with us. Uh, my cows are pretty gentle until you get them hemmed up. And then they get kind of, some of them get a little mean. So, I'll, you know, I have to bear that in mind as I decide who to keep and who to send to freezer camp, as we call it. Um, the other thing that's been going on is working with the horses. I took my horses back. I brought them home to go to the vet because my vet was coming and then the vet didn't come this week. So now I've got to take them back. But I got Flames prizes for our year end. We were reserve champion in the Arkansas Dressage Society at our level. So I got some beautiful prizes. Um, got a nice saddle pad in a bag and a beautiful sash and my medallions for my 60s and 70 point tests. So that was beautiful. Um, very proud of her. Decided I'm not gonna breed Gusty for sure. Not gonna go that route this year. I've got some ideas about next year for Trixie. We'll see what happens. Uh, been riding with, you know, over with the Rainbow Riders when the weather permits. This week, we've had to cancel every single day because of the weather. Um, on Sunday, Rory, uh, Miss Marianne's, one of Miss Marianne's granddaughters, Amber and Scott's youngest daughter, graduates this, well, I guess she graduated Tuesday night this week, but they had a graduation party for her. Well, for years, she has wanted Marianne to bring Caramel, her horse, down to one of the events at the school or an event at the house or something. And Marianne's like, no, 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 no. I'm too nervous to drive a trailer. So she asked me, she said, would you take us down there? I said, sure. I don't mind. Downtown Little Rock. 
<laughs> the historic district, historic homes. Here I come with this horse trailer. It was fine. It went fine. It was a total surprise. We were able to sneak in and park. Luckily, they own the house next to them as a rental property. And we were able to park alongside it where we couldn't be seen. So we got the horse all ready and we're walking down the sidewalk. It was really funny. Um, but anyway, so that was a nice surprise. Um, the day of the conference that I had last week, I looked outside and my big bull, my big 2,000 pound Angus bull was standing in my yard <laughs> by my truck. And I was like, oh boy, okay. So I walk out there and he startled when he heard me, but then he recognized my voice and he calmed down. So I just drove my truck down to the gate and he followed me because he knows my truck is what brings the feed. And I open the gate and he goes in. And I'm like, okay. And I think I figured out I had three larger bulls. Two of them we took to the, to the processor, but one of them is still left. Um, they were fighting because the next morning they were doing the same thing and they were fighting right out here. And there's a DSL station on the corner of my property. We leased that to the DSL company. And when they put the fence up, they didn't use very good wire. So the wire is loose. And I think those two bulls were fighting because there's black hair on one of the, on part of the wire. I think that one bull got pushed through the fence. Because they'll those big bulls, when they get to fight, they'll kind of shove and push like this. And I bet Charlie got pushed through the fence. Because he hasn't been, he was, he was, a, he was as surprised as I was that he was in my front yard. <laughs> and he hasn't been out since. So that's good news. Um, you know, just been taking stock of everything. Um, had to get some work done on the air conditioner. It's getting older. I'm probably going to have to replace it eventually. I'm looking for an engine for my car to try to get it to last two or three more years. Um, I lost some trees to the cold, this cold snap that we had. I lost one of my Mayhaw trees, did not survive. My pomegranate got frozen back, but it's coming back from the ground. So that's good. My Asian persimmon did not survive. My two quince trees died from a fungus. Um, and I, and whether or not the figs are going to come back is up in the air too. Cause they had, the last time I checked, they had not come up yet cause they come back from the ground every year. So we'll see. I don't know. You know, that's part of, part of having, you know, farms is sometimes you lose stuff and that's not fun, but that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, one exciting thing that I did is, um, I bought a genetics test. I bought a DNA test kit to see what my ancestral DNA is. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, and I'll talk about why I did that in Final Thoughts. So uh, I guess we'll move on now and talk about Final Thoughts. Okay, so I said I bought a DNA test kit. I actually did some research from different places and this is CRI Genetics. Uh, they came very, they were the highly rated Highest rated one on like four of the websites that I looked at. I mean, Ancestry.com has a good one and so does 23andMe. But uh, this one seemed to have more information. Um, so I, this just come in the mail. This actually just came in the mail. I went out and got the mail. And uh, part of the reason why I want to do this is uh, one of the um, people that I follow is Lady Speech Sankofa. And she is a, a hoodoo and conjure priestess. And one of the things that she talks about is um, looking at your ancestors, looking at healing your ancestral line. And, and um, this goes along with looking at things like systemic racism and homophobia and transphobia and um, all of these long bloodline hatreds that exist in our world is one of the things that we can do is we can examine where we're actually from to understand where we're actually from before we say, I am this or I am that. You really need to have some some more evidence and i realize that this is not the be all and end all uh, and this is just the very basic test uh, there's other ones that you can get which i'll probably do eventually but um i think it's important to understand that we're not you know this this wave of nationalism that i'm seeing sweeping across the united states scares me a little bit because we're all from somewhere else you know, and we had to take on, we had to hope that when we, when our family came here, that they were accepted. And some of us families weren't, and some were. And so I think it's important to understand that journey, that, that generational 
journey and that generational trauma in some cases for some people um in, in order for me to be a better ally and a better uh, more spiritually minded person i think that this is part of that so understanding my place in the circle okay so um that's why i did that but that's what informs this week's reading so, Willie, I'm going to have to let you hop down for just a second because i got to get my book. I'm actually reading from a book. Now, I will, will say this is a story about a snake. So, if snakes make you nervous, you might want to skip ahead a little bit because uh, this is a story about a, a snake. This is from a book called uh, A Country Year, Living the Questions by Sue Hubble. And this was given to me by my friend Jennifer. Uh, and it's sort of a, a, a year-long journal of experiences living on a farm little essays so this is from the essay summer number 74 or summer and it's page 74 um snakes again and this is kind of long so bear with me snakes again black rat snakes this time i can't tell one five foot black rat snake from another so i don't know if the one that has been showing up in the chicken coop each and every friday all summer long is the same individual or not but i rather think he is my theory is that a week, a week is the time it takes for him to digest his meal of mice and an occasional egg. This is theory only, for none of my books tell me when meal time is for a five-foot black rat snake. It is something I must ask my herpetologist friend the next time I see him. Black rat snakes are some of the largest common snakes found around here. I estimate the one in my chicken coop to be five feet, but they can grow to six feet or more, and they are shiny black as adults, but patterned strikingly with brownish and blackish markish markings when they're young. The vaguest hint of blotchings can sometimes be seen on the adults, and this gives them their scientific name, Elephaphae obsoleta obsoleta. Elephaphae elef, 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 allies them with their kind, the other rat and corn snakes, and obsoleta is a term used in biology to mean indistinct. Their common name hints at their diet. I have named this one Friday. Far be it for me to wish a mouse ill out of hand in the chicken coop this spring, but in the chicken coop this spring, eating so much of the chopped corn I put out for the chickens that I was keeping more mice than chickens. The trouble was that I was fresh out of cats, my pair of barn cats having died within months of each other last winter after 15 and 17 years full of full and inscrutable lives. Late in the spring, I adopted a kitten, but he had to do some growing before he became a mouser, and in the meantime, the mice, unchecked, multiplied rapidly until they became a bold nuisance to me and to the chickens. So I was pleased when I saw the first black rat snake in the spring. There were mice in the barn, mice in the chicken coop, and soon the black rat snakes of all there were soon black rat snakes of all sizes everywhere. One of the reasons I think Friday must be the same snake is that he had grown self assured in his sense of possession of the chicken coop, where he soon had the mouse population reduced to tolerable levels. His species can be fierce and will bite if attacked, but Friday seems to understand that I do not intend to hurt him and he ignores me. The day I found him coiled up in a nest, the three eggs he had swallowed clearly apparent in his midsection, he looked at me calmly. He was too lumpy to slither away quickly. Last Friday, when I went out to gather the eggs, he was in the coop again. The day was a hot one, and the two-inch wide circle of water at the base of the chicken watering fountain had enticed him to try a bit of a bath. He looked at me square in the eyes. I stood laughing at him. No supposed serpentine dignity could keep him from being anything but ridiculous as he tried to loop and jam his entire five-foot length into the small circle of available water. Black rat snakes also feed on birds, and in deference to their taste, I brood the pullets I buy each year in the spring in the cabin. I keep them under an electric light in a refrigerator cart near the wood stove. Their downy softness is a delight for a week or so, but they grow gawky rapidly and stupidly peck one another if they do not have enough space. Their sawdust litter needs constant replenishing. They are untidy with their feet in water, and I soon grow weary of them as roommates. One spring, I put them out too soon, and the next morning found a dead pullet, too big for the rat snake to swallow, but small enough for it to kill. Now I keep the pullets in the cabin until they are too big to be the snake's prey. Another time I, I ha was able to save a pair of baby Phoebes from a black rat snake. The parent birds had built their nest just under the eaves of the honey house and I had been watching them off and on all spring through the window. The two eggs had hatched and there were two fledglings in the neck, nest 
when I was working in the honey house one day and heard a terrible ruckus outside. The parent birds were nearby in a nearby persimmon tree crying out in distress. A black rat snake, like the good climber his breed is, had slithered up the side of the honey house and was looped around the nest, calmly swallowing the two baby birds. I ran outside, grabbed the snake by the tail, and shook him hard. The baby birds dropped out of his mouth, wet but undigested. I threw the snake as far as I could, scooped up the babies, and put them back in the nest. The parent birds remain in a state of ineffectual confusion all day, alternately repelled by and drawn to their offspring. At nightfall, they finally return, and the pair of young Phoebes live to fly from the nest on their own. And there we are. With my meddling, back to the human, responsible for putting a flock of chickens in prime mouse habitat, setting the process in motion in the first place. I like to think of it as a circle. If I take one step out of the center, I follow, find myself part of that circle. A circle made of chickens and chopped corn and mice and snakes and Phoebes and me and back to the chickens again. A tidy diagram that only hints at the complexity of the whole. For each of us is part of other figures too, the resulting interconnecting whole faceted web-like, subtle, flexible, fragile. As a human being, I'm a great meddler. I fiddle, I alter, I modify. Neither is good nor bad merely human, in the same way that the snake who eats mice and Phoebes is merely serpentish. But being human, I have the kind of mind where, which I can recognize that when I fiddle and I twitch any part of the, at any part of the circle, there are reverberations throughout the whole. And that made me think about where do we put ourselves? Are we in the center expecting everything to exist around us or are we trying to be part of the whole? You know, we talk about who is centered in a conversation, who needs to be the center of a conversation. And one of the things that I am really studying hard on is how do I take myself out of the center, and become part of the web so that those who need to be in the center can be there. And also, what is my impact? What are my reverberations on the whole? Because every act I have has a reverberation. Hence the DNA test. What are those reverberations that have come down to me over the over the generations of my of my life of my family? Something to think about, right? Anyway, I hope that you are all doing well. I hope that you are staying dry if you're living underneath these rainstorms like I am. Um, please take care of yourselves. We are not done with this pandemic. Please take care of your physical health. Please take care of your mental health. You know, please get help if you need it. Please do not, you know, feel like you're alone and um, that you are not seen or heard. Reach out, okay? Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Until I see y'all again, be good to each other and take care of each other. And Willie, Willie, he's mad because I made him get down. Willie, come here. Come here and say goodbye. Come here. Oh. <laughs> Come here. Oh gosh. Woof. Tell him what, Willie. Peace out, y'all. Bye. Mm.